sculpted or hand casted mannequins. The one that we have here is um, one of their student mannequins. And each one has its own partner. So if you separate them, because it is hand cast, you need to make sure you put them back together correctly. He has a stand up on the shoulder, so you can see how the scapula can lift off. And what I really like about the anatomy clay is that with these hand cast skeletons, you can write on them and you can erase. Them. So it makes it really easily reusable. And if I wanted to see how it looked upside down or turned around, you can look at all different angles. So as I said, John Sahurik was the, the sculptor, the, the artist that invented anatomy and clay. It's right here in Colorado, in Loveland, Colorado. And they've been showing this all over the world, from uh, the East Coast to the West Coast, and now they finally have a really nice um, store, uh, anatomy and clay center here where you could go yourself and actually take a class. So this is, these are, our, this is our army of mannequins. These are for my students from this past summer. And they matched up there each of their halves. And when you break this in half, or you separate the, the skeleton, you can see the cavities in the space. And you can fill in other um, systems. So it doesn't have to be just the skeleton, and it doesn't have to be just the musculature, but you can include the circulatory system, the gustatory system, the renal system. So it gives quite a bit of ability for your, for your students. So the anatomy clay centers are here in Denver, um, and they're, they have lots of different types of models. They have models that are in this anatomical position that we have here. They have them in a dancing position, so you can do first position, second position, fifth, they have um, crouching, so you can see how those muscles change just by walking compared to standing. And what I really like about the anatomy clay is that their logo is, the mind cannot forget what the hands have learned. And that is one thing that we've definitely found true with our students. Our students have shown that, you know, after taking the anatomy clay, they really truly remember and understand where the origin is or the insertion, what nerve innervates it, what blood supply. And in fact, there's been a couple of recent studies showing that using clay models um, significantly increase, increases retention of anatomy in um, compared to using cat dissection. And one study was done in Ohio and another one was done in Pennsylvania. So well, how do we use it? Well, I'm part of the Colorado AHEC program office. And an AHEC is Area Health Education Centers. It's a federally funded program. Every state has an AHEC. And we are allowed to use our money based on what needs we have. Here in Colorado, we really have a need for rural and urban underserved physicians, pharmacists, nurses, doctor, um, dentists, PAs, behavioral science, um, all those different pieces. So we look at trying to serve Colorado based on those needs. And this is our mission statement. And in each one of these mission statements, it's about working with health careers or workforce. Um, and my position is actually looking at the health professions continuing education, or uh, uh, student education. So this is where Create Health falls underneath the Colorado AHEC program office. So I'm the director of Create Health, which is looking at all the different healthcare pipeline programs. And once a student gets interested in healthcare, anywhere from being in the middle school to um, high school, we try and help them find the next pipeline or program that will help them make them um, very strong applicants for the different health professional schools. So I designed the Create Health Scholars, which is a piece that was for undergraduate students. We didn't have a healthcare pipeline program for undergraduates here in Colorado. And using Create Health Scholars, this is where we implemented um, anatomy and clay. 
Create Health Scholars is an undergraduate program, as I said, for um, students interested in getting into the different health careers. We really focus on looking at students from the rural and urban underserved areas that go to the smaller colleges so that they can become stronger applicants. And one of the things that we work with with these students is truly really trying to identify their different learning styles. So we all have different learning styles. And they've been identified from VARC. Visual, oral, reading and writing, and kinesthetic. And what the anatomy and play really does is it integrates all of those different learning styles. So if you're a very visual person, you can actually see your results when you're done. The kinesthetic, the actual moving of the clay and building the muscles or the, uh, the vasculature. I'm an oral learner, so telling the story of how I'm building this to a friend really helps re me retain that information. And if you like reading and writing, like I said, you are welcome to write on these uh, with pencil. So there's a way that it integrates all of them. Now we're not all just one type of learning style. We're actually more multimodal. About 70% of people are multimodal, meaning that they have more than one learning style that they really favor. And this is a way that we can really start teaching the students how to identify their different learning styles and start using new techniques to make them a stronger athlete or stronger students in general. So you don't have to be an artist, as I've already said, I'm not one. Um, and this is great for all ages, because pretty much it hits anyone who is from kindergarten, who's ever done any kind of clay building, you make your clay steak. And we've integrated this with using our students and teaching um, uh, high school groups. So we can really start making those connections because here we are really trying to get that pipeline program and get students who are interested and they start being able to do that service portion, they can go and meet other students from their regions, teach them something, but then also talk to them about how did they get into the position where they are now, how, what, how have they been successful. So this is kind of our way of really aligning those different pipeline programs by doing certain uh, types of outreach. And the one thing that's, you know, it's fun. You get to play, you get to do art, um, and there's nothing that's really wrong. So as I said earlier, you can really do systems learning. Um, the picture on the left, the one that says Learn Anatomy by Building, is done, I think, by John Zahurik himself. Um, I don't know if I could ever do anything that beautiful. <laughs> and as you can see, that's a different pose compared to the skeletons that we have here. So for Craig Health Scholars, we use the skeletal system, the musculature, the nervous system, and the circulatory system, as well as the urinary system, because that's a smaller piece. It's um, easy to use a kidney bean to represent the kidney. But if you wanted to really build a kidney, and to cut it in half, you can use clay again for that, just as uh, we learned about the cerebellum being yellow, but here we keep the cerebellum as white. So here's the skeletal system, and the picture on the right is of a disarticulated skeleton. So that would be a true life-size skeleton that you would have to share with you know, five or six different people. With the, your own skeleton, you can add two people to a skeleton, uh, or each person can have their own half. So we find that by having the ability to hold on to it themselves, they, they retain quite a bit more information. There are slight differences between the mannequin versus a disarticulated skeleton. <coughs> For example, we already have cartilage so you can see the nose is attached, the ears, the knees, some of the joints. And the joints are not movable. And that's just because uh, if it were, were more movable, the clay would easily come off. So this is a way that the clay stays very uh, easily onto the skeleton. One thing about the mannequin is you can't really see the interior surfaces of the joints that you can see in a disarticulated skeleton. And a disarticulated skeleton does not have the interosseous membranes that you can see are between the ulna and the radius, as well as between the tibia and the fibula. 
<coughs> but it does have several of the same bony landmarks that you would see in a disarticulated skeleton. And in some places, they're actually um, increased in depth, such as a, a deeper fossa, possibly, or a larger um, tuberosity. And the reason being is that it helps the clay stick to the mannequin. So these are some of the, the games that we can play with just with the mannequin without even getting out to the, um, to the clay. As we ask the students to find these different fossils. Or what is a tubercle? Or the different types of spines that you can find? Or a processing? Or a foramen? There are some foramina that are in the neck here. And that's so when you bring the nerves through, but they don't really correspond to the exact location, but you can kind of get an idea when you bring nerves through those different foramina. And then we are also able to really get people to understand the differences in, in uh, language, like what is a ramus, why is it called a branch? So we really try to integrate not just the anatomy, but also all the terminology for the students. And you can see the kidney sitting inside. A big piece really is the musculature um, system. And that's just because there's so many muscles. And then that's when you can start really building the form. So we go through the different muscle rules for all the students, right? Muscles have at least two attachments. And that they attach to bones, but you do have other types of attachments as well. <laughs> muscles have to cross over one joint. And we really talk about how even the sutures are considered joints. So it's a great way to really get the students to realize why these rules are so important. Because when they're actually building it themselves, you can ask them, well, why did you make the brachialis just on the radius? Why did did it cross a joint? And then they can actually see, oh, now I understand it does go to the humerus. So they can really see those differences. Uh, we talk about how muscles contract and they pull attachment sites together. So while they're building this, we actually make them use their own body as another example. Uh, that muscles work in opposing pairs, so if you bring your hands towards you, you want to be able to bring them apart so you can see the ones anterior versus posterior. You can draw fibers onto the clay, so you can see the direction and you can see how, as a really big muscle, how you have different parts that are going to be doing different um, motions, and you can really see that through uh, fiber direction. But I think the student's favorite muscle rule of all is that ugly muscles still work. <laughs> so you don't have to be an anatomist, I mean an artist to be able to do this. Um, another thing that works really well with this program is that you really learn to build inside out. So the students get to learn how a muscle is on top of another muscle and where that vasculature may come through or the, the nerve and then another muscle comes on top of that. So if you start building from um, the surface, you're going to have to keep taking off your muscles. So it's a great way for really the students to learn how to build from deep uh, to the surface. For example, in this, we're looking at the serratus anterior. This is the way we teach the program, is they get a 2D drawing, find out what those origins and insertions are, and then they get a picture of what it should kind of look like on their skeleton. So here you can see the serratus anterior um, actually is on top of, so it's superficial to the intercostal.